Hello, hopefully you've already read this article, Rise of the Drones. There's two opinion texts in this article, one, Cage the Machines by Peter Sowell. This text is discussing whether or not drones should be more regulated, and the word regulated means should there be more rules and rules about how and when and where to use drones. The second text is another opinion text, and this is the one we'll focus on right now, called Let Drones Fly Free. Think, which one had which opinion? Which one had which claim? Because one of these had the claim, no, we shouldn't regulate drones, and one of them had the claim, yes, yes, we should. So right now we're going to focus on this text right here. And we were talking about claims and evidence, reasons that the author believes something. So the first thing I'm going to look at in this opinion text or argumentative text is, can I find the author's claim? I'm going to zoom in a bit. You can do this with your tools as well. And usually the author's claim appears early on in the text. So I'm going to look at paragraph seven. There is no way to fairly regulate drone use and any new rules would limit future innovation. Okay, so it seems that the author's claim is stated pretty clearly at the beginning of the text. She believes that new rules for drones will limit future innovation. I'm going to clarify that in my head. That means if we put restrictions on how and when and where we use drones, that might limit how we're able to use them in the future in new and cool ways. Okay, now that I've identified my claim, I'm going to use my tools and I'm going to add a post-it note just to remind myself of what that claim is. I'll use orange today. I'll put that in my margins and I can write right on the post-it you can as well. So first I'll make a note that says claim and I'm going to try to think back and use my own words to write down what the author's claim is, what her opinion is. So the author believes that we should not regulate drone use because, always have that because, it will limit future innovation. Now like I said, I'm going to put that in my own words, make sure I understand. That means that if we restrict drone use, hmm, what do I want to say here? If we restrict drone use, we might not use drones the best we can in the future. All right, so I have the author's claim and my clarification of it. Perfect, if I click off, I can get back to my text. I'm gonna zoom in a bit more. Cool. So now that we have our claim, which was right here in paragraph seven, the first paragraph of this article, I need to ask myself, why does the author think this way? What evidence does she give to support her ideas? I'm looking for evidence or reasons. Usually that'll come as we read the text, so that's what I'm going to look for now. I'm gonna go over to my tools and grab my highlighter. I'll choose a color I like. I just want it to be a little bit more of a bright yellow, I think, that'll work. I'm going to make it so it's kind of thin so I can have more control over the highlighter, perfect. And now let's start reading. Imagine this, it's the day of the party. No one remembered to buy the cake and it's less than an hour until the guests arrive. Thanks to new drone technology, a person could have a cake delivered to the party in fewer than 30 minutes. Package delivery can be revolutionized with drones. Drones can deliver more than just a forgotten cake. A number of companies are already developing drones that can carry packages as heavy as 24 kilograms or 55 pounds. Well, okay, I think this paragraph is already helping me to answer the question, why does the author believe that we should not regulate drone use? I'm seeing that she's giving examples of a situation where drones would come in handy, a time when we could use drones even better if there weren't so many rules around them. Here she gives an example of a person who forgot to have a cake delivered, and then she makes her example a little bigger, a little could apply to anything else. She says, packages, package delivery can be revolutionized with drones. Grab my highlighter again, I'm not sure that one worked. Here we go. She said, package delivery can be revolutionized with drones. 
let me make sure I understand what that means. If something is revolutionized, that means it's made it's made new and it's made better. So package delivery can be revolutionized with drones. She goes on to give a little bit more explanation of what she means. She said a number of companies are already developing drones that can carry packages as heavy as 24 kilograms or 55 pounds. So this is some evidence that our author uses to support her claim that we shouldn't regulate drone use because we can do such cool things with them. I'm going to go back to my tools and I'm going to grab another post-it. I'll make this one green. And I'm going to keep track of the evidence I found. So I'll label this note evidence. And this is my evidence to support the claim. I'll say the author uses an example to show how drones can be really helpful. She says drones are, I don't want to say revolutionizing, I want to use my own words here. She says drones are great at making package delivery easier, even with heavier packages. I remembered reading that later in the paragraph, so I added that here as well. All right, so I'm making note of my claim and my evidence. I'm gonna look for one more example of evidence that the author uses to support the claim that we should not limit or regulate drone use. Let's keep on reading for a moment. The benefits of drone use in our society outweigh the disadvantages. Drones can do more harm than good. The agricultural industry, for example, could greatly benefit from more drone usage. Farmers already use drones to help conserve resources and to be more precise when it comes to irrigation. But drones can capture aerial photographs of crops from miles away. This could help farmers monitor crop health and show them whether or not certain crops are ready for harvest. So what I'm seeing is that the author thinks that while there may be disadvantages, the benefits outweigh those disadvantages. That means there's more benefits than there are negative things about using drones. She uses the example over here saying that farmers can use drones to conserve resources and to be more precise with irrigation, which is like watering their crops, and the drones can help capture aerial photographs of crops from miles away. So farmers can keep track of their crops from a distance without having to waste time, energy, and people to go look at certain crops. So I want to make one more note of my benefits, my evidence of why we shouldn't regulate. I'll grab another post-it. I'll make this one blue. doesn't matter what colors these are. And I'm just going to say, I'll put this one over here. I'll say, I'll move it so you can see it. I'll say evidence. The author says, and I'm always going to try to use my own understanding of what I just read instead of copying straight from the text. The author says that drones are more helpful than harmful. For example, and I'm going to use this paragraph right here, paragraph 10, as my example of evidence. For example, drones help farmers watch their crops closely without extra time, work, or people. And that's what I got from this information right here. This could help farmers monitor crop health and show them whether or not certain crops are ready to harvest. So there's my other sticky note with evidence. I'm going to put it off to the side. So, since the author started with an example that a lot of people could relate to, this thing about, oh, you're having a party and you forgot the cake, you need to get one quickly, this is making me think that the author is, hmm, who's she writing to? Who's her audience? I think she's writing to the everyday normal person who could benefit from drones. Because I could think of a number of people who might be in this situation at a party where they forgot a cake. She's trying to convince the reader that more rules are not necessary, that a lot of people can benefit from drone use. People who deliver packages, Telegram. people at a birthday party, farmers, all sorts of people. So now I'm thinking about the audience. Who is the author writing to? I'm going to make one last sticky note to myself. Make this one green again. I like that color. 
I'm going to make a note about the audience. I think the author is writing to normal everyday people. She uses examples of a party with cake, of people needing to deliver packages, and of farmers. I think she wants everybody to realize how helpful drones could be. So there are my thoughts on the audience. Harvest. You're going to make, make that mistake a lot clicking on words and it reads them for you. All right, so that is how I looked through this text and looked for not only the claim, but evidence that the author used as well. You're going to practice this next, and I want you to think. When I read an argument, I have to ask myself, what is the author's opinion, and what reasons and examples does the author provide to support their opinion? Then, who is the author writing to? Who is the audience? And finally, do I agree with this? Do I think this author made a great claim, great evidence, or do I think they could use some work? Do I agree or disagree with the author's claim? Harvest. All right. Thank you very much.